guys, welcome to another episode of My Something Random. So today I'm standing in front of the lathe and we are going to be doing a little bit of deep hollowing. And we are going to be using the Keith Clark hollowing system. You can check them out at okspindoctor.com. Um, but it's a number of parts, one of them being this, I believe, it's like an inch and a quarter steel bar. And we'll get this set up and we'll show you all how to use it and what I like about it. So starting off with, you notice this big hoop here, and this is a steady rest. It's got a number of different positions that you can put the wheels on. Um, I don't have it touching the wood right now because I found out that because I do have a bunch of natural voids in this, it vibrated a bit, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of my hollowing without the steady rest. Now, when you're doing hollow and you wanna use this, make sure that you have you know, a ring at the top or somewhere on this that there are no voids um, because otherwise it's just going to vibrate and you actually risk damaging your wood. You'll notice this is covered in shrink wrap so I've got it covered quite tightly in shrink wrap and that's as I'm turning it keeps it from expanding out and breaking. And we've got this set up with a Forstner bit here so what we're going to do is we're first going to take out the center and we're going to drill kind of at our depth and then we're going to start doing our hollowing. Uh, this was started by a buddy of mine. I actually didn't start this piece of wood, um, but we are going to continue to work on it with him and get this finished turned. So a couple of the parts for this hollowing system. You've got this captured bar system here. This really isn't necessary, um, and you'll see why in just a minute and how it works. Uh, but this was included in the kit. And granted this giant thing here, which it will just be sitting on here for looks and it really won't be working for the application that we have got. Before I continue on and we hollow the center of this thing out, I want to talk briefly about this giant steady rest here. So Keith Clark built this for me and in my previous uh, comments here, I said that he I, I had him make it for two different lathes. It set it for a 14 inch lathe and or a 24 inch swing and really you tell him what lathe you want and he will custom make it to as many different sizes as you want. Um, and these are just different positions that you can put it in for the different size lathes. Um, I like this and I don't like it in certain sense. It's a super heavy duty. I mean, this is made out of steel. Um, it's very, very heavy. Um, now, I haven't looked on his website or see if he's done any design changes, but he's made these rings that go around this flat hoop, and it's tack welded on. I wish that he had continued the bead all the way around, which would have made this thing, I think, a lot more rigid because there's a little bit of flex in it when it's on something um, that's not perfectly flat. There is a number of different steady rests out there. One is being the Carter system. It's another big hoop like this. The advantage to having the Carter system, I'd say, over this one is that it's hinged on one side, which makes taking it on and off uh, quite nice uh, because you don't have to pull your tool rest off and you don't have to pull your tail stock off because I think you can just hinge it over your wood. Um, now, granted, you'd still have to take the plate off the bottom, which you can still do with this. I haven't used the other one, so I can't comment on its rigidity. It could be less rigid than this, and I could just be nitpicking. Uh, because this is made really, really well. It's powder coated. He'll also powder coat it to whatever color you want. But um, it, it does the job well and it's I mean it's definitely made beefy whether welding these seams all the way around on both sides would make it more or less rigid I don't know but I'm kind of stuck with it the way it is and it's worked just fine for everything that I've used it for so yeah this is the Keith Clark steady rest he also makes the deep hollowing system which I'm going to be featuring in this video primarily um, but this is here I thought about using it but ended up can't because of those voids so let's go over the setup really quick. You have this rear support mechanism that is adjustable for the height of your lathe, which makes it nice because if you have a different size lathe, you upgrade a lathe, you have multiple sizes of lathes, um, you just loosen the little Allen screw here um, and this thing goes up and down. 
So this is unique to the Keith Clark, I'm sorry, Keith Clark system is with this mechanism on the back, and I'll scoot this forward, is patented. So you've got a captured system here with a roller bearing, and then the shaft, if you can see, there's a machined notch. This moves in and out. There's a pivot right here, and it runs on a bar. So this way, in and out, as well as this way. Very, very, very smooth. If it's not ever smooth or ever bind, just put a tiny bit of, you know, light oil, oh, mineral oil. Um, if you use hand planes, the plain oil that you use to oil your hand planes works great too. And then you have this giant steel bar, which I believe he sells in multiple lengths, just depending on how deep you want to go. Um, so the end here has got a collar, so it will fit in multiple sizes of hollowing tools. And the nice thing about that is you can use pretty much anybody's hollowing tools out there on this bar. So so long as it's the same size shaft, even you can use square stock in here. And I'll show you some of the cutters that I've got that he gave me um, that will they'll lock down in here. But one thing that I did is I had one of the handheld ones by Sorby. And this is one of their curved tools. I just took the handle off and it was exact same size. And so I'm able to fit it right in here and it just locks down and then I can use different cutters on here. One of the other unique things on this is if you want to do more freehand turning and allow this to turn and you, you know, adjust the angle of attack to your wood, all you do is loosen that guy right there, sorry, on the bottom, and that'll allow this to rotate freely. And then it's just like using a freehand tool, but you've got the mass of this giant bar behind you. Also makes it nice if you want to, you know, adjust this. You can do it one of two ways. You can get in here and adjust these guys or do it on that end. But everybody and their brother sells these profile tools, different curves, and then you can just adapt it to this. So you don't have to buy their hauling rig to use these. You just buy these and then just bolt it into there and you're good to go. This really, this top guy, this captured system up here is not really necessary for this just because once this is clamped down in the back, it's not going to rotate. There's also not a flat spot on the back to prevent this from rotating. So it's very, very smooth. This, I guess, would just be to keep it from falling off. So I just left that on here. It's not a big deal. So real quick, moving over to some of the cutters. This is one of the cutters that came with it. Now, Keith, I happened to be able to meet the guy and go down to his shop because I had the fortunate thing that he happens to live here in Oklahoma where I do. And I was able to go down there and kind of tell him what I wanted to be able to fit. Now these are part of the cutters that come with the little Sorby one. But I can put everything from this to this to what I've got on here now. And I've kind of modified this and I got one of the easy wood tool cutters and I'm going to be using this to hopefully finish out this maple burl bowl. It's pretty darn hard, so we'll kind of see how it cuts and acts. I may end up switching back to the other one, um, but we'll see. So I also got a double-ended tool from him that slides in there as well, and I can put smaller cutters on there and even tinier ones out here for, say, doing Christmas ornaments or really tiny stuff. Sorry, I can get this to focus on there. So like I said, multiple, multiple sizes of cutters, and then you can, of course, get all the different profiles of curved cutters. Um, I believe he may carry some, but, you know, go to Woodcraft, go to um, Rockler, go to some of these other places that sell predominantly turning tools, and you can get all times of uh, handle, unhandled uh, 
profiles and stuff for your So drink. my system here is ever so slightly older than the ones he has in his website now. He's made some improvements. One is that he cut a slot right here. So when you loosen this, you can actually position the bearing to ride differently on this track because he has a, uh, a square machined uh, track here. And so I'm running mine a little different than he shows in his pictures. I'm running mine on the bottom because with the tool, it's gonna wanna rotate this way with the pole. And so this is pushing against the bearing. And so it, it runs differently. If you have this running on the top or in a different position, it wants to bind ever so slightly. But with the new machine track, that he's built into the new uh, bearing holder. Um, it makes it so you can put position this a little bit different so the bearing will actually run flat against that bottom surface. I haven't found that I needed to go and call him up and say, hey, can I have that upgraded thing? Um, because it works quite well. So we'll finish real quick taking the middle of that out and I'll just use a Forstner bit because that's a heck of a lot easier. And then once we get started hollowing, um, I'll get some close-up shots of how the system works. All right, this is my buddy DJ. He has never used the uh, Keith Clark hollowing system here. And we are using one of the easy wood tools uh, cutters on this modified uh, Sorby hollowing tool, so we're going to see how this, this works, and he has never attempted this before, so we'll see what he thinks. So what do you think of that cutter? I think it's taking away a lot more. It's actually cutting and not chipping. Yeah. So I think it's a Well, so for somebody who has never used a hollowing system, how I'd easy do you this one's way better. How, how do you feel like that whole setup works? I mean, is it pretty easy? Yeah. I mean, you, you don't feel like you're having to fight it at all, do you? No, I mean, when I was trying to go inside, it catch a lot more like freehand versus like something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I definitely say this is cutting better than... The captured cutter. Yeah. And yeah, because that one's actually cutting versus the other type of cutters where they're just scraping the wood away so yeah. and the cool thing about that type of bar is really you can stick any type of you know third party cutter on it just whatever your preferences are so you know the last two that we use the curved one and that one are both made by Sorby um, but they just fit right into that system and work really good
guys, so here's the progress that we've made so far. We've got in there pretty deep. And I didn't talk about it, but midway through I switched to this cutter. This is another Sorby one, uh, but it's actually a cutter. And it's got a captured ring on top that moves back and forth just to uh, set how aggressive you want the cut. And it works a lot better than just a scraper tool. Lastly, you can see up above here that I have got a laser system hooked up as well. This is also part of the Keith Clark system and makes a little dot and you just angle the top to the distance that you want your wall thickness to be based off of where that dot is. And so in the inside it would be lined up on top but as you move closer and closer to your goal eventually the laser dot will disappear and fall off the edge and then you've reached the desired thickness. So overall this has just been a video to highlight the Keith Clark hollowing system. You can check him out on the OKSpinDoctor.com. Okay